This is the Polaris Slingshot. If the front region looks bizarre, move it to the back. Check it out. It is a three-wheeler. The Slingshot is one of those cars that's so bizarre that really the only way to tell you about it is to consolidate everything we know into a convenient list. Oh, social media will love that. Let's say the top 10 things you should know about it. You have to wear a helmet, at least where required by law, because steering wheel be damned, this is a motorcycle. But don't take my word for it, here's a helpful warning to drive the point home. Wearing a helmet in something so car-like feels goofy, just move to a state like Maine or Florida where helmet laws essentially don't exist. I mean, taking a bird or a tire to the face while driving a three-wheeler certainly does feel like a Floridian way to injure oneself. If you were blindfolded and placed in the driver's seat, you'd probably think you were in some sort of watercraft. There's a plasticky minimalism to the interior that helps with cost but also means the slingshot is weatherproof. Speaking of proof, here's irrefutable evidence that the slingshot can manage wetness just fine. Like jazz and clever design, the Polaris Slingshot is largely defined by what's not there. For example, unlike a used Miata, the Slingshot lacks airbags, meaningful impact protection, or a heater, which you might not notice until driving through the desert, in winter, at night. Considering there's no roof or doors, you might be surprised to learn that there is a substantial blind spot over your right shoulder. Why, all sorts of terribleness could be hiding over there. You also have to get used to the view obscuring buzziness of the side mirrors and the fact that there's no center mirror, but eventually you do. Something else, the optional windscreen bisects your forward vision. Of course, most other directions are completely unimpeded, so try looking there instead. With a dainty 1,749 pound curb weight and a 2.4 liter Ecotec four cylinder engine under the hood, at least on paper, the slingshot looks like it should run like a Motel 6 faucet. I know what you're thinking, the Polaris slingshot looks pretty quick, right? And it is, it is. I mean, it's uh, zero to 60 times around six seconds. That means it's faster than that Toyota Corolla or Camry or whatever you're driving, but you're not gonna blow away any Lamborghinis. Let's see what happens when I floor it in first gear. Yeah, that's pretty good acceleration. It doesn't quite go as fast as it looks, but that's okay. One of the key advantages to the amount of power that is available to you in the slingshot is that you have to use this transmission to really keep the engine in its happy spot. So downshifting to second, back up to third. Nice short throws, the transmission and the shifter, one of the highlights. It might look incredibly sporty, but that doesn't necessarily translate to how the slingshot steers. The steering is squishy and imprecise, kind of like the Pillsbury Doughboy doing your taxes. The same thing holds true for the brakes. There's a dead spot at the top of the pedal, so every time you press it, there's about a millisecond of concern before the brakes grab and you start slowing down. It's also a little bit tough to tell where you are in terms of the limit with both the front and rear tires, meaning it's a little bit confidence sapping. Add it all up and the Polaris Slingshot is not the most confidence inspiring car you can take on a windy road. It wouldn't be my first choice for very aggressive driving. One other weird thing that you might not think about, but when you drive a normal car, it's on the left and the right side of the road and that clears out debris. With the three wheel situation that you have with the Polaris, uh, the middle rear tire is right there in the debris. So if you come over this crest and let's say there's a bunch of dirt in the road, the tail might step out. Drive with caution.
criticism aside, there is a place for the Polaris slingshot. If you dial back the pace a little bit, you can relax, unclench your hands and other parts, and just enjoy the sheer openness of the cockpit. Let the wind come around you and check out the view. In fact, if you don't mind a hard ride and a little bit of buffeting on the freeway from the wind, you can drive this thing some distance. In fact, we drove all the way from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and back again, and uh, yeah, no problems. Kind of enjoyable. fielding questions from curious onlookers like, did you build that yourself, or is it fast, I always ask them how much they thought the slingshot cost. Answers range from $10,000 to $100,000. Kind of like an omelet made from platypus eggs, it's hard to tell if the slingshot should be incredibly cheap or wildly expensive. There's just no point of reference for this kind of thing. Well, the answer is $20,000 for the base model and $24,000 for the SL, which boasts pearl red paint, a windscreen, an infotainment system with 4.3 inch screen, six speakers and a backup camera, and 18 inch front wheels instead of the base car 17 inch units. By the way, all slingshots include a two year unlimited mile warranty and at least according to the internet, freight and setup charges seem to vary greatly by dealer, so compare before you buy. Whether you think of the slingshot as a car or a motorcycle, you're wrong. It occupies this weird little niche all its own. I have no idea how much demand there is for a hyper-minimalist street-legal three-wheeler. But one thing is absolutely certain. You cannot, in the world of wheeled transportation, buy more attention for less money than the Polaris slingshot. Onward to the next destination.